if you want the slides, please get them. They're at that tiny URL. You love tiny URL. Uh, enough said about them. Um, so this isn't your typical CNCF talk because I am not here to talk about my project or a project. I'm here to tell you about other people's work and hopefully help solve a larger problem that keeps nagging at me day in and day out whenever I talk about security. So for those of you who just joined, are there stickers back there on that back table? Feel free to grab all you want. I have more and I'll try to make this a little bit participatory. But first off, does anybody here work somewhere where they have an active security champion program? Right there? All right. There's a turtle for you. Sorry. I, I crochet and knit things. Anybody else? Anybody else? Have, I saw your hand almost go back up. Uh, I was predicting the wrong no worries, no worries. Any, and, all right, well, you get a turtle and a crochet on the plane. There's a sea anemone and an uh, octopus here. We'll get to those later. All right. This is my friend Leslie. She's a real person, though all the clip art from this entire presentation is public domain. Comes from Wikimedia. Thank you, Wikimedia. Thank you, public domain and com Creative Commons. Leslie kind of looks like that, though. She's a real person. She is an accountant at an insurance company. She is security-minded in so much that most, I think, accountants are. Uh, she does log into multiple systems a day, like we all do. She has MFA enabled. She believes in security. One day, she gets an email that looks something like this. Again, Wikimedia. Um, she says, this looks fishy. There's something wrong here. I don't know what to do. She asks her boss, hey, boss, what do I do? And I assume since they're in accounting, they're counting boxes constantly. Uh, and her boss is like, I am really busy. I have no idea. Uh, go figure it out. So she goes and looks in Slack. She goes and looks through her welcome emails. She goes into JIRA. She spends more time than any human should in Notion because it's Notion. And she can't figure out what she's supposed to do with this dang thing. She knows there's something. There's something in the back of her mind. It's like, I know I'm supposed to do something with this. But by this point, she spent an hour that is not her job to go figure this out. And her boss is like, hey, where's that report? So she says, uh, I, don't, I know, I'll just forward this to security at. And she forwards it to the entire security um, department. And she gets yelled at. They come to her desk and make her feel bad. They say, hey, you went to a training six months ago, you watched a five minute video and you clicked a box that says, I know what I'm doing when it comes to phishing emails. And she felt bad because she got humiliated in front of her entire department, in front of her boss. And she tells me this over a beer. And I said, Leslie, that sucks. What if, what, what if, what if there was a situation where you ask your boss and your boss is like, hey, go, go check out that, that Slack channel that everybody keeps talking about with that security stuff they keep talking about. And she's like, what on earth is this? So like any good person on Slack, she goes and clicks up the, what is this channel? And it's like, Okay, welcome to security party, ask your questions. Smishing, I don't know what smishing is. What was that guac thing I saw? All right, well, whatever, here's my screenshot. And immediately fireworks go off and she says, wow, what on earth did I do right? And immediately gets a response says, hey, we're gonna review this, but it looks like you did the right thing. You're in the right place. And then later security comes back to her and says, congratulations, you're the first person to report this phishing campaign. You're entered into our monthly drawing for 25 bucks. And guess what? Now, you've just educated someone about what smishing is, because she's at least curious. She's seen the term now. It's not a completely outside of her box term. She knows there's a security channel with a bunch of stuff she can just go read, and nobody's gonna get mad at her if she asks a question there, and they're very inviting. It looks kind of like a fun place to be. And now the entire rest of the, everybody on the team knows that, hey, she got celebrated in this public channel for doing the right thing. Maybe she's the security expert on our team. And with one phishing email reported to a place that was welcoming, she suddenly becomes a security champion. I don't think this is a dream. I don't think it's a pipe dream that is unachievable. I think this is how security is supposed to work, and we just got it wrong along the path. Who am I? I'm Dwayne. I live in Chicago. I came out here for this. This is my second CNCF uh, security, Cloud Native Security Conference. I am so happy to be back. I love Seattle so much. Um, I co-host a, uh, a podcast called the Security Repo Podcast. Check it out. We get all sorts of crazy, awesome guests like Jason Haddix, Jason E. Street, Tanya Janka, uh, Brian Hendel. Uh, I don't know why I've tried the hardest last name to pronounce in the entire industry. Say his name out loud. But we have a lot of really cool content. 
Um, find me on social media. I'm mostly active on uh, LinkedIn these days, the least evil of all of them, I think, and the easiest to use. Uh, and I love rock and roll, obviously, if you were here pre-show, we're talking about really cool bands. I love karaoke. We're in the town of Rockbox, the, like, the coolest karaoke club I know of. Party like a salary man. Go look at their website, it's amazing. Uh, and I'm going there tonight in case anybody wants to go sing karaoke with me. I work for this company, it has very, very little to do with my talk, um, but they sponsor me to be here. And so a good, big shout out to Get Guardian. We do secret detection, remediation, uh, honey tokens, source composition analysis, uh, IEC and public monitoring. Happy to tell you about all those things, especially SA, uh, SCA, that's our newest thing. We can talk about that later. Let's get back to the problem at hand. Security became this department of no. Uh, who here has ever read um, uh, The Phoenix Project? The homework assignment for everybody else, go read The Phoenix Project. Th that literally illustrates what the department of no is. Someone that gets in the way and says, you can't do that, and is just a binder full of problems. By the end, he figures it out. Uh, he has to have a mental breakdown to do it, but he figures it out. Um, who here has ever read uh, Cults of the Dead Cow? Go read that book, it's great. It explains how the industry evolved the way it did and why the hacking community became the security community and how that happened. But along the way, security went from the thing IT just did and something developers had to deal with to a department that yelled no at everything. What I'm suggesting and what is capable and I've seen in real life and talked to a lot of people that have these programs, that's why I was excited, someone here actually has a program to hear, but your stories after, let's talk later. We can do this in instead. Well, actually, sorry, I forgot I had put the slide in here. Um, and if you think that, hey, the problem is really the developer and that's where we need to focus our time, uh, go watch this talk. Uh, all you need is guest from Black Hat last year. It'll blow your mind and keep you up at night because 60% of the applications we're running at this point in our in our uh, infrastructure didn't come from your developers, is outside the purview of IT. They're built on these power platforms like Zapier, and they're tying together databases that just anybody can access. It's kind of a nightmare, but go keep watch up at night. So it can't just be we're yelling no at developers, and we can't just say, hey, we gotta fix this at the developer level, we gotta fix this at every team level. And I think it looks like this, that every team has an embedded person or set of people that are their security champions. They're the people that you can go ask and say, hey, does this look right to you? Because security can't be in every meeting. We'd have to hire one-to-one. -one. Every new person you bring on to your company, you'd have to hire another security person to keep up with them. But what we can do is empower everybody to be that person who wears a badge and says, hey, or a hat or a t-shirt or whatever, and says, I am, I'm a person. Because this is what we're actually trying to solve for, I think. All of our security problems boil down to, we had a conversation and no one said it was a bad idea to just walk into Mordor. Nobody does that. You can't just do that. We can't use that field. Hey, why are we asking for this information? Hey, have anybody vetted that this platform is something we can actually use? Um, hey, that's a great idea and all, but do you know there's a thing called a CNCF scorecard where we could use to like vet these open source projects, not just your cousin built it? We can't be in every conversation in security, but we can empower other people to ask the right questions. So how do we do that? Well, again, I didn't write any of this stuff. I am just the person who agreed to stand up and talk about it, and I'm very motivated because, again, I wanna help my friend Leslie have a better time, and that starts with all of you. I'm gonna to refer to three specific guides. There are more. These are just the three I like. First one from Dustin Lair, uh, the security champion guide. That came out of the work from Fivetran building one of these programs. Uh, Tanya Janka, uh, Janka um, the She Hack Purple community or the We Hack Purple community. Anybody here remember the We Hack Purple community? Oh, go join it, it's great, we're wonderful. Um, and then OWASP, that's where I'm gonna spend most of my time because I firmly believe in OWASP. Open web, used to be application security project. Now, anybody know what the A stands for? Anybody? If you look it up, I'll ask later and then you can win something. All right, uh, so what is a champion's program in the first place? Well, Dustin Lear defined it like this. I really like this, but it's a little wordy. Uh, so I underlined, I think the keywords, they spread awareness of the best practices to reduce the overall security risk of your organization. Who here thinks that the entire mission of security is to lower risk? 
guess what? That's what your board of directors thinks it is. That's what they see so they're telling the CISO. That's how the CISO has to communicate with them, is about risk. We'll get to that later. Uh, they're not security people. If we just keep adding security people, again, we'll solve this, but nobody has that kind of budget. They're gonna represent security on their teams. Very importantly, they need to be that liaison that has the conversations both ways. Hey, this doesn't look right. I know who to call. I know who to talk to. I know exactly where to get the information I need to make the right, best decision. In one slide, if you do take no other pictures, I would highly recommend this one. It comes directly from uh, the WeHack Purple community. We have to recruit the right people, engage them in the right ways, teach them the correct things, recognize their efforts, reward them when they do the right thing, over-communicate, got to apply metrics. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on metrics. In fact, I'm not going to spend any time on metrics because I only have 30 minutes with you. And then at the end, you got to stay motivated. You can't stop. If you ask OWASP, you get a lot of documentation because it's OWASP. A lot of people wrote really cool words. But it boils down to these 10 points, and this is what I want to go through the rest of this presentation and inspire everyone to at least write that first email. We'll get there. Before we go any further, though, this isn't a magic trick. This isn't something you can wave a wand and it just magically your security situation gets better. This is an effort, this is a project, this is gonna take time, this is a journey, like everything else. What works for Dustin Lear, what worked for Tanya, what works for the people at OWASP that wrote their guides, might not work for you. You might find a better overall situation, a better overall solution that works for your team. That's the most important thing, that it's gonna work for your team and for your company. I love Tanya because she said this, wrote this down actually. Uh, she doesn't call it her law, I call it her law because Tanya Janka law. Um, you'll never have the staff budget or time to do all the security work you wanna do. You just accept that. This is the best next effort you can do to solve the vast majority of security problems. We can't just keep blaming the end user for clicking a link and exposing healthcare records or bank account records or gigabytes of source material or source code out on the web. If one person in one department can click one link and expose that kind of data, you don't have security. You just don't. You have something. First, you need to be passionate. If you ain't got a passion for this, don't even start. That's uh, my favorite uh, Charles Bukowski poem is roll the dice. If you're gonna go, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you're gonna go, go all the way. If you don't have it in you, you're never gonna lead anybody else. But there might be somebody else on your team who really, really is. They might be the bright person. Tell them about this talk. I see it as kind of this problem. Who here sees this picture and immediately immediately wants to put this camera back together. Anybody? Yeah, raise your hand, be proud, it's fine. I think they're finding kind of two people in the world. Who wanted to be the person that took this camera apart? Sometimes it's the same person, but it's just two different mindsets and you can't teach this. This is just who you are. Does anybody just feel really uncomfortable that there's a camera that's been taken apart? I don't like this picture, I really don't. I leave it in here because it illustrates the point that you're either passionate about this or you're not. You either have one feeling about this or you don't. Your life experience has led you to this moment. Same with security. You can't teach someone the passion. You can inspire them, but unless they grab onto it and move forward, they're not gonna be this. Two, you gotta start with a clear vision. This is really, really hard, and I don't know why it's so hard, but it really is. I think it boils down to this four, these four words. I have produced well over 300 improv shows in my life in the city of San Francisco and around the country and a few other places, a uh, few in Chicago now that I live there. Um, I used to live in San Francisco. And the most important lesson I learned throughout all of that was these four words, make the poster first. Because what does a poster tell you? Where it is, when it is, who's involved, what on earth is going on, how you're gonna get there and everything. Now I love this poster again, because it's public domain, but none of these, these are all cover bands. But uh, what, a, what a lineup. But I know everything I need to know. I even know where to go to get more information, right there. It might not be a poster for you. 
I like to think in terms of blog posts because I think in terms of blog posts and spreadsheets and Kanban boards, but you might have a different way to approach this. A video, I don't know. I don't know you. Uh, but start with at least an outline, at least something to write down. It's like, hey, in a year from now, this is what we achieved. That takes some vision. That takes some guessing. Are you going to be 100% right? No. Will you get close? Maybe. The first conference I ever put on back when I worked at Get Kraken, uh, I said, we're going to get uh, the head of a very large company to come speak at my conference. And sure enough, we got him. And that was like the one thing I nailed out of my blog post. And like 16 other points I got completely wrong, but hey, we're very, very happy about what we achieved. So write down your goals in big, broad terms, but make them specific and say, this is what the future looks like if we do this right. Your goals might be different. If we could just get everybody on MFA, fishing resistant MFA, we'd have a better day. I think we would. Back on risk. We have to get the Leavich, Leavich Sticks uh, train company board of directors from 1883 online with your idea. That's just where the picture came from. This is a bunch of Germans, uh, citizens who got together and made a railroad company. Anyway, we're, we gotta get your management online. And it all comes down to speaking in their language. One of the most insightful conversations I've ever had in my entire life was with this guy, Walt Powell, field CISO at CDW. He said it very succinctly on my podcast, risks aren't threats, risks are not vulnerabilities, they are not exploits. They're what you're set to lose if things go bad. That's what your board of director cares about. What are we gonna lose? How have you protected our assets? Not what vulnerabilities did you reduce? Not what, how many MFA enabled things, great. Hey, we reduced our overall risk by this much. That's a hard conversation to learn. That is the difference between a department level and exec level of that level of conversation. But it kind of boils down to that top level. Benefits versus cost hey, for $1,000, we can buy a bunch of gift cards for $25 a piece and incentivize people to do the right thing. Or we can spend $10,000 on the new suite of software that no one's gonna touch because it impedes on their workflow. Which of those sounds better? <laughs> I think one, uh, but it should be a win-win situation that everybody's gonna have a better time, everybody's gonna get on board, everybody's gonna do ultimately the better thing for the company. You can't do this alone. Don't even think you can do this alone. This is something that requires a team effort. And every team needs captains. Yeah, you need a coach. You need somebody that's in charge that actually is the person you put in front of the board eventually and say, this is what we did with this program. But the day-to-day -day operation, you're gonna need other people that are passionate. And you're gonna need to recognize that they need to be different skill sets. I used to run the marketing team for the WordPress community, uh, make.wordpress.org slash marketing. Uh, that team's actually going away. I did 18 months uh, serving as co-lead co of it. My mirror image was a woman named Bridget Willard. Shout out to Bridget. Uh, and we worked really well together because she was the ultimate cheerleader. She could get anybody on board and rah, rah, let's go build some use cases. Let's go build um, uh, case studies. Let's go build a glossary. And I was the mechanic. I built Kanban boards. Again, my brain thinks of Kanban. And I kept us organized. And I ran, uh, one time we had a meeting with 16 different time zones on it. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, these massive online conferences uh, in Slack and using Trello. And together we complemented each other perfectly. And that's what you gotta find. The complement to the thing that you are good at. Because you're not good at everything. This is all a myth that we're humans. Graphic design is not my thing. That's why I stole all of these images from Wikimedia. Not stole, used in a public domain way. You gotta trust your champions. The people that you are investing in need to be people that, I don't wanna use the word like, but people that you implicitly say, this person belongs here and they're gonna do the right thing. And the only way we can do that is by actively listening to them and empowering them with yes ands. So let me break that down. Active listening is not just, okay, you reported it to me, let me go process that and I'll get back to you. It's not just 
grilling them. I'm like, hey, you said this. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that is a very destructive term, ultimately. It's useful in certain situations. Let's dig into that. I think it's a better term. But understanding where they're coming from, asking the whys, like, so why do you think that's important? Oh, I totally hear you. What, are, what would you think would be a better solution here? And if they come to you with ideas, and they will, no is, again, a very destructive term. Because if you have a client out there, uh, this is true in the, the, the web building space, the web, uh, web uh, website building space, you have a client that comes to you and says, I want to change the entire front screen to be green, background, and a flashing sign at the top. Well, that's a terrible idea. But if you say, that's a terrible idea, they're going to immediately say, I want it. And they're going to defend their terrible idea. You say, yes, and that's going to cost you $10,000 in addition to what we already talked about because I need to do all this testing and regression testing with it. Oh, let's talk about that. It backs them off a ledge, gives them a way out. Yes, but is also that, but I, my idea is going to supersede yours. And here's the reality behind what you just said. A little bit easier conversation. But again, know that they're coming from a good place with it. Hey, I have this wacky idea. Yes, and we can do that, but here's the footwork that you would need to do. And here's the resources that required. Do you think there's a way we can get those resources? Ooh, I didn't think that through. All right. In order for this to work, it needs to be a team effort, and that team needs to feel like a larger community than just, I am a person on a team reporting to another team. I'm a person on a, in a community that is helping this community thrive. Part of why I think this talk fits here at Cloud Native Security Con is because that is the very nature of what we're doing here. This is built on the back of open source projects and people volunteering their time in a community setting to make the world safer. You can build that same mentality into your local community inside of your org. Hey, we're all working toward this better goal, this better future where everyone gets celebrated, no matter who they are, for just doing something that makes us a little bit safer at the end of the day. What that community actually looks like, what form it takes, can be very online, can be very much uh, Slack channels and Discord channels and, uh, and other things. But realize these are also people. You should have some kind of ways face-to-face that everyone can see each other. If your company's so siloed that accounting, sales, marketing, and QA can never be in the same room, you should really ask why that is. I mean, if you're at the NSA, maybe. Everybody's spying on each other, maybe. But uh, other than that, like, hey, we're not against each other. We're one group working toward a common goal. That common goal should be include safety. And it needs to be that two-way street. It can't just be uh, my worst answer anybody ever gave me ever of how do you communicate with your team about your goals and security is like, we send out a quarterly newsletter. That's a terrible goal. That's a terrible way because it's once a quarter and there's no feedback loop from it. There's no two-way street there. A community invites discussion. Again, that's why we have this conference. The hallway conversations, I think, more important than what I'm saying up here. What gets done out, maybe not more important, but uh, the hallway conversations of like, hey, I have this idea. Hey, I'm working on this thing. I got this project I haven't really put that much f focus on, but I just, I think it's a good idea. If that can accelerate, then that's how entire projects get born. But inside your organization, hey, I have this thought or I have this question make a free-flowing information and invite people to show and tell. Yeah, out of order on that, but uh, show and tell. It all boils down to this, what Jason Street said. Jason E. Street said, you can't pay anybody enough to really care about your data, but you can convince them to work to improve security for their bank accounts and their kids. That goes back to the show and tell. If people are rewarded and celebrated with giant fireworks like, hey, I updated the firmware on my home router. Wow, that's awesome. You 
understand Wi-Fi enough to understand you should update the firmware on it. Please go home and update your firmware on your router, please, everybody. Uh, if you haven't done so recently, change your passwords from defaults and make them secure. Uh, anyway, make a place where they can show and tell that. And because if they are saying in public on their channel, hey, I got my mom to use MFA for her bank account. Hooray. Because now they know MFA works and they'll bring it into the office. And when they get confronted with like, we have a new security option for you that's gonna make your life safer. And guess what? You can use this at home. I don't have my keys on me, but uh, give them a Yubi key, give them a, a Titan key. Because if they start using that in their personal, personal stuff, to log into their personal uh, Google account, guess what? They're gonna not fight you at work when you want them to use it for an application because it's already in their brain. That's the safer way to do this. Promote the knowledge sharing. This goes back to the two-way street and celebration, but it also is larger than that. This is my favorite, one of my favorite parts about working for the company I do now is we don't have a dedicated champion program internally because the entire company operates this way. We're constantly, constantly sharing information. Every day, there's multiple channels where we share it in, but my favorite one is um, cybersecurity news. Uh, there's content, there's cybersecurity news and a couple others uh, internally, but cybersecurity news is like, hey, did you see this? Hey, I read this article. Some of it's related to my company, some of it's not. Some of it's just like, this is news of the industry, ransomware attacks, the, um, the Fed hack, which we don't know if it's real yet, but terabytes of data. Has anybody seen if that's been confirmed yet? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was this week. Um, a group, uh, a threat actor came out and said, we've breached the Fred over years, we have terabytes of information we're gonna release on US monetary policy. VX Underground's like, yeah, we don't believe them. VX, bank, no. What's that? It's from a bank, not the Fed. I thought it was the Federal Reserve. I'm just reading all right, all right. That updates all the time. See, this is what I'm saying. Information's constantly shifting, and we need to share it openly. I already gave you something, so I'm not gonna give you more. But um, I'll speed up here, because I know I'm, I'm getting reached toward the end. What? It's not, it's not the Fed. I was wrong. I apologize. The news article I read three days ago once. Sorry about that, everybody. Oh, okay. See? See? This is what I'm saying. We need to share this information and do it in a way that just feels, at some point, what is this thing I'm reading in security? Oh, no, no. Like, Jim over in, you know, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan in row three, depending on row three's department, updated us on this thing. And the security team's like, thanks. I didn't see that yet. You're doing it right. Also, shameless plug for the security repo. Um, reward the responsibility. Hats are really cheap. Uh, there's actually a company called Champion. You don't even have to do anything special. They'll just sell you a shirt that says Champion on it. They, they sell them on Amazon. They're not that expensive. Uh, Amazon gift cards. I love them as the prime example. I know there's some companies that have very strict, you can't give anybody money in addition to because of things. But you know what you can do? You can print out cheap certificates and say anything you want on them for almost free, printer paper, buy a pack of gold stars. I'd hang that up in my cubicle if I had a cubicle. Uh, you know what's also free? LinkedIn badges. You can just make them. Nobody's stopping you. How awesome would that be? Anyway, also they all add up to annual reviews. Uh, hey, I got praise from the security team three times the past year. Does it guarantee a raise? Absolutely not. Does it look dang good? Yeah. Is it one more thing to brag about in the one meeting of the year where you're supposed to brag about all the stuff you did right? Yeah. Can't hurt. Arm them. Arm them to go in there and say, I went above and beyond my job to make this company safer. And say that with a straight face and know that they, and then your boss know that they mean it. Invest in these people. I didn't really get into how to identify these people. If you go through all these guides, it's gonna be one of the first things they talk about. But there will be people that raise their hand and say, I, I wanna learn more. Invest in those people. Send them to conferences. How many people went to anybody, other department? Oh, first off, who here works in security at their company? Who here as a developer at their company? Who here, is anybody accountant in here? No accountants. I always use accountants because that, that department I don't understand at all. I don't, I don't like numbers. Um, 
but who went to another department and said, hey, I'm going to this thing called Cloud Native Security Conference. You want to come? Did anybody do that? That's how you're here? That's awesome. Here. You can, you can have a, uh, we'll get it later. Um, that's yours. Um, that's an octopus. Um, but invest in them. All the vendors you ever work with, sorry, we didn't mean to do that. Uh, 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 all the vendors you work with have somebody like me internally that wants to go give an awareness talk so bad. Oh, I want to give this talk so bad internally. Not just this talk, but like, hey, do you know the problem with secret sprawl? Do you know the problem of not using a centralized vault system? Do you know how end-to-end -end security works for secrets? I want to give that talk so bad. I'm not there to sell you anything. You're already a customer. I just want to like, tell you about all of these problems and there, there are solutions out there and how we can think about these things in better terms. And as a CEU thing, it's not getting into that. All right. Um, anticipate that this isn't a forever thing, that there are no such thing as an eternal champion. There is a game called Eternal Champions, which was a masterpiece on the Sega Genesis system that no one seems to remember except me. Anybody here love that game? Anybody even remember that game? It's a masterpiece. Anyway, uh, but back on topic, one of the problems of signing up for anything is like, how long do I have to do this? My friend Jim, uh, Jim Birch in the Drupal community said the best thing about having a module that 10,000 people use is 10,000 people are benefiting from your work. The worst thing is that there are 10,000 people you have to support now in the open source, can you signed up forever. Make sure that people know that, hey, if you signed up for this, if you wanna be a champion, give us three months, give us six months, give us six weeks, whatever works for them. Let them know that, hey, if you wanna to come to like one training, cool, that's cool, and help us run this thing, and help us coordinate, that's amazing, thank you. The people that you've nominated to be captains to help run this thing with you, especially tell them that they don't have to do it forever. And listen to the feedback. Oh, it goes back to active listening. If they say, this isn't working, this thing is not working for us, figure out why. You don't need to fix it. You can fix it for the next time, but actively listen to what they're saying. Quick bonus round advice in the last two minutes I got. Uh, leverage AI wherever you can, because why not? I had to make AI in this talk because it's 2024. Um, Go talk to your designers. Your designers might not be on board with security right now, but they want to design stuff. They can help you. Uh, if you know anybody that knows how to build chatbots, this is a time to talk to them. Like, hey, you want to build some chatbots that build reward systems into our Slack channel to automatically set off fireworks when someone posts a screen cap of an email? Yeah, that's, that sounds, kind of sounds fun. <laughs> Why not? Let the bots do the heavy lifting of, hey, you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for actually using this channel. Make it personal. At the end of the day, we're all people. I love this picture. I don't have time to explain why I love it so much. But this person made it and just put it on Wikimedia for free. Thank you. That's the nature of open source. I made this out of love, and I just want other people to have it. Find out why people are motivated and what would make someone do that and reward that. And if we can keep encouraging that, then we'll keep growing the community. Then we'll keep growing security. Then we'll keep getting security right. Octalis framework is brilliant. Dustin Lair gives a wonderful talk about this on a couple of different podcasts. But you can go see other talks about it out on the internet. Basically, there's eight basic ways to think about how motivation works with the human beings and the way our brains work. Go gamify the thing the best you can. Go, go read that. And you gotta be inclusive, especially to people with non-technical backgrounds. Just understand that everybody belongs here. And where here is, it's where it's secure. So I would encourage you to all open a terminal right now. Not terminal, what am I saying? They're not Linux deads. Uh, go open your email client and start a conversation with somebody. I don't care who it is. Could be your mom. Could be someone on your team. Could be your boss. Hey, I got this idea. What do you think? and start that conversation. You'll be shocked how many great ideas people have that are sleeping on this. No one would ask them, how do we make security better for everyone? How do we improve the culture around here? Has anyone ever asked you that? Has HR ever sat down and said, how do you think we can make security culture better around here? No, of course they didn't. That's not their job. Anyway, in conclusion, we need to be here. We can't be here for everywhere, for everybody. 
but we can enable everybody that's going to be in that room to ask the right questions. How do we do that? We empower individuals on every team to be that person, to say, wait, did we think this through? Can you just walk into Mordor? I don't know if you can just walk into Mordor. Make the poster first. Just write down your idea and what it looks like. Not the idea of what you want to accomplish right now, what you accomplished a year from now. Put it in those terms. You might not be 100% right, but wow, what a way to march towards something. Because this is ultimately where we all want to be. Three o'clock in the morning, there are no alarms going off. No one's breached our environment. There's no somebody calling us in a panic because the database has gone away or been locked with ransomware. And we sleep through the night. Anyway, I'm way over time. I meant to leave time for questions, but I'm Dwayne. I live in Chicago. Check out the Security Repo podcast. Hit me up, especially at Rock and Roll. If you want to go see karaoke later, let's go to Rockbox. And uh, if you want these slides, that is the slides up there. Thank you very much.